right. Um, so I thought I'd show you guys a little bit about uh, the Nero base. Um, since, I mean, it's it's quite popular on my channel. I see people are quite interested in this sort of thing. And um, I also feel like I've gained a lot of experience with this sort of sound and also will be exploring some phase plant today. And for those of you who are not familiar with phase plant, um, it's basically signal path. You can do the same thing within within um within phase plant you basically have oscillators and they go in here and they go out and then they go in here and then they go out and then they go in here and it goes to the master but you can route stuff other ways as well it's basically the same as patcher except it's all a single plugin where the hell is it it's basically the same as patcher you can also route things in here but it's just all in this one neat little package which i really like so we'll just be exploring some some Nero today. So I started off with uh, just a regular saw wave, and I think that's what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to take two regular saw waves, right? And in order to make it all Nero-y, the basic way that most of these sounds started, if you especially if you listen to old drum and bass from the 2000s, you hear a saw wave that's detuned. And that na 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 sort of rhythm that's that that gets created and gets created is as a resu result of these two oscillators moving in and out of phase. And you'll notice when I play lower notes, it's slower than when it's higher notes, which is all fine and dandy. Um, but how do we get it to sound all noisier? You know, um, for that. I usually start it with some filtering and and this is just to get some sound some some movement in the sound and um serum only has two filters but this has multiple filters and i can do whatever i want with these and already you can tell that is what we need to do in order to get this sound de Niro -y. so we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to take an lfo and we can end add endless amounts of lfos in this plugin which is amazing i love face plan it's just Fascinating. Already you can tell we're getting there quite quickly. Uh, we might actually, what's cool is we could play, hold control and press this on the top of this little plugin and it duplicates it. And I'm just adjusting the, the modulation a little bit so they're doing different things the point um and i've spoken to a few of my friends in in a discord teaching them how to make this sound the point of these things that i'm doing is i'm trying to create as much movement in the sound as possible um in terms of the frequency spectrum that also reminds me that you can mess with stereo as well so i just increased the unison here and what we can do is we can create another lfo it's best to use as many LFOs as you can. Um, I'm going to change the speed as well. And link the other LFO to the spread. And I think unipolar might be working a little bit better. What unipolar does is just makes the parameter move in one direction instead of two ways so that's just to give it some movement in the stereo width and the stereo uh spectrum or whatever you want to call it the in the headroom section of the sound <laughs> and notice how i haven't even gotten to any distortion yet so um what i also like to do is this is basically doing the same thing that phasing does a lot of times um because if you take sounds and you phase them, what happens is it creates these lines in the frequency spectrum. I might actually be able to show you guys if I open up Wave Candy in uh, FL Studio. Of course, all of this stuff applies to other DAWs as well. But if I open up the frequency spectrum and I set it to uh, a spectrum. You notice all of this movement happening in the frequency spectrum. If I turn off these 
yeah, if I turn off all those effects and just turn on the first oscillator, the phasing that's happening is as a result of the, the unison in the first oscillator. If I turn it on, it creates movement. And if I turn on the second one and turn off the unison on the first one, you'll also no notice movement as a result of the the two oscillators moving in and out of phase because of the one the one's pitch being pitched down 36 cents so that's just to illustrate that the creating as much movement in the sound is the important bit and when I add a phaser, I'm not as familiar with the phaser in, in phase plant as with the phaser uh, we use in, in FL Studio. So I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work. But you get the picture. Movement is key. Um, where is the... We could, I bet we could use a flanger as well. What, where is the phaser? Phaser, phaser, phase. Here we go, phaser. My eyes are tired. You notice that that shift from from left and right, and it's just creating a lot of movement in the sound, and that's the point. is I can also uh, modulate the cutoff for this thing. And now, now that there's enough movement in the sound, I would start doing some distortion. Um, usually I would have started with distortion, but in recent times I've been experimenting with doing distortion later in the sound. Which reminds me, we need to add a separate sub. So in this case, I'm going to make a new group in phase blend and add an analog, another analog uh, generator and then add an output for that. And I'm going to send that to the master. Not the master of FL Studio, but the master of uh, Faceplant, obviously. And I'm going to make this a sine wave, so so that we have a separate sub, so that if I uh, s stop all of this, you can hear the sub. Because we are getting rid of all these lower frequencies if I just turn this off. Because we're going we're gonna to get rid of those by using a high pass filter. But if I add it back in again, adds the bass back in. And usually I just uh, end off with some sort of either a low pass filter or some other form of filtering. The point is with these sounds, with Nero sounds especially, is creating as much movement from stereo, from left to right, um, and in the frequency spectrum, like I showed you with phasing or filters, create as much movement in the sound before distorting it and then filtering it again. playing fairly high notes, so let's do that and play some lower notes. And last but not least, we're going to do some gliding. So what glide does is the same as portamento. It basically just shifts between notes without skipping. See, it just, the, the pitch or the, the note stays constant. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to change the polyphony to one voice at a time. So we can't play two notes at one time. And we, once you play the second note, it just cancels off the first one and plays the second. And from here, it takes a little bit of experimentation. This is basically the basic formula I use for this sort of thing. Um, uh, usually I experiment with the unison. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, adding a little bit more distortion sometimes it does do the trick. It does seem a bit mono, so a trick I found out literally about an hour ago is that Faceplant has this thing called uh, a multi-pass plugin, and then you can add effects on the specific bands. So I can decide to put an effect on the higher end of the sound. And what I'd like to do is make the higher end a little bit more stereo with the stereo effect and not touch the lower frequencies at all, which is very helpful. I just noticed we can add a fifth band in here, which is fascinating. I'm not sure if I can automate this. No, I cannot. Oh, well. <laughs> Create as much movement as you can, distort it, and filter it. And then if you want to give it some more wideness, you can do something like either use reverb, which I find can be a little bit messy, or something like uh, any form of thing that creates more headroom. Um, I'm not sure how all of those work here, but for... I bet the horse effect will actually be interesting. I would recommend reading up about Haas because we learned a lot about him. And it's a, a sound theorist, I'd say. Um, he did a lot of theory about how sounds work once you play them inside a space and they start reverberating all over the place and how your how your your head uh the distance between your ears actually helps you determine where a sound comes from because of where it bounces around the room it's a fascinating story just read up about it it's really cool um and that's what needs i would probably add something like a compressor <laughs> needs a little bit of headroom though oh well let's do the, f the reverb then something that's fun to do with reverb is to automate its um, its mix or whatever value you want to call this the mix value the wet value whatever um, it's fun because you can make the reverb come in and out, which is a lot of fun. Let's just make this unipolar. And then uh, a lot of times I just like to stress this is playing really low and high notes with drum and bass sounds or Nero sounds is key. Because it trades out those shift shifting frequencies, which helps a lot.
thing that I like to stress, this is basically the, the end of the sound, but um, another, another thing that I like to stress is once you've created the sound, and this is very, a uh, very important part of uh, sound design workflow, is once you've created, uh, let's say, a neuro sound like this, you can save it out as a patch. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't really care much for this. <laughs> it's not my best work, but it's just illustrating the point. You save that patch out and then you use it later. And you separate your workflow between making sounds and making music. So once the songwriting part comes, you just rip out all of your little plugins that you made and you don't have to worry about uh, ownership issues because you basically made all of these yourself. So yeah, this is the Nero sound with Faceplant. Um, I hope it was helpful for those of you who use Faceplant. And if you don't, I hope it's still ha helpful because signal path still applies. And I only used one lane in this whole thing. Well, basically two because I used one for the sub. Um, but yeah, I hope this is um, just somewhat informative to all of you. And uh, Faceplant is amazing. So yeah, <laughs> I hope you guys uh, appreciate it. This is a little, little showdown. And if you did, go ahead and do all the things that all YouTubers tell you to do down in the bottom of this video. Cool. Thanks a lot. I'll check you guys next time. Peace.